The woman in this dramatization plays on the sympathy of the victim, wins his compassion, later his confidence, and eventually his money. The woman makes the pigeon aware that she needs money, but she doesn't ask him for it. Instead, on signal, another con artist working with the woman appears to have solved... Today we're talking about the pigeon drop, one of the oldest cons on record. It's difficult to describe briefly, but I'll walk you through it so there's notes. The pigeon drop requires two scammers, lots of money, and a mark that's either greedy or trusting. It really doesn't matter because the scammers will end up with the money anyway. Imagine this scenario on the street. Imagine this scenario on the street of a major city. You're going to be the inside man. I'm going to be the outside man. Okay. All right. So the inside man's job is to rope people in. Okay. Take as much time with them as you possibly can. But as soon as you make a connection with that person, okay. then I'm going to come up and I'm going to find the wallet. The wallet. The bait we will use to put in an envelope, seal it, and put it in my jacket pocket. Then I'll take out an identically sealed envelope which contains magazine pages cut to the size of paper money. The key to this con? Make the target, or pigeon, believe this envelope has the real money in it. The voice you heard has the real money in it. The voice you heard first was illusionist Dan Harland. He's working with Michael Shermer for a 2007 program on the art of con games. Shermer is a best-selling author and founding publisher of Skeptic Magazine. Shermer and Harland head out on the street with a camera crew. The object of deception? A lost wallet holding $3,000. The scam begins with Shermer on the street asking random people for directions. He finds his mark in a man who's in no rush to escape the conversation. Harlan plays the second con artist who finds, who finds the wallet holding $3,000 and interrupts to see if it belongs to either of the two men. Of course it doesn't, so Harlan comes up with a solution. I can't read that person's name. Well, I'll tell you what, I think we should split it. Dan has oh, now planted the seed yeah, that our pigeon uh, stands to make $1,000. Yeah. It's, it's a grand apiece. I, I'm going to put it in an envelope here. Playing my role as the honest citizen, I let the pigeon see me put the money in an envelope for safekeeping. Then I'll let you know if anybody's reported a wallet stolen, you know, or missing or whatever, you know. Here's where Shermer puts the envelope in his inside jacket pocket. Then the obvious question comes up. Question comes up. Can he be trusted to hold the money? Of course not, but the sucker doesn't know this. So Shermer pulls the envelope from his pocket and hands it to the mark. What the mark doesn't know is that Shermer has switched the envelopes and the new one contains only scraps from magazines. The real money is still in Shermer. This is where the pigeon drop becomes difficult to explain without the video. So we'll turn to Bruce Walstead, who's an expert in fraud. In his scenario, $38,000 has been found in a box. He'll bring us up to speed on how his con, speed on how his con has evolved. Now, oftentimes, in most cases, actually, there's a note in here also. Matter of fact, in here, there's a note in this one. And this is uh, this was actually recovered evidence. This one I'm holding in my hand right. here. And the actual note is still in here. And this one says, the note says, $38,000, cops have been paid off, div. <laughs> this, this is payoff money. Now, generally at this point in time, my accomplice would walk up. And my accomplice looks nothing like me. My accomplice could be someone older, younger, different race, mm -hmm. different sex. I saw the whole thing, what's going on, you two? Now we all start a conversation just found. Right. Usually then, me or the second person says, listen, I know somebody nearby here who knows about this kind of stuff. I'm going to go ask them. Go back, and that person would leave, I would leave, or the second person would leave and come back with the good news. And the good news usually was, we can keep the money, but we have to keep it all together for 30 days. That's the law. We all together for 30 days. That's the law. We can meet again right here a month from today, 30 days from today, and split it up. What do you think? Now the negotiations begin over who will hold the money and if they can trust one another. These negotiations don't always go as planned. 
Back in 1993 in Seattle, a man approached a potential Mark asking for directions to a local church, flashing $80,000 that he wanted to donate. The Mark was impressed with the scammer, and when it came time to negotiate, he went to a bank and got $1,200 of good faith money. The Mark soon smelled a money. The Mark soon smelled a rat and demanded his money back. It was returned to him, and everyone went their separate ways. About a week later, the scammers were working outside a shopping center when they were spotted by another man. That man was the son of the Mark who got his money back. That man was the same story his father heard earlier. The officer was happy to play the role of sucker and drove the scammer to a nearby convenience store where he could meet his partner. The officer flashed his badge at a passerby and asked them to call 911. When the first scammer left the store, he was immediately arrested. Left the store, he was immediately arrested. Officers summoned by the 911 call caught the other scammer. Six other victims later picked the two scammers out of a lineup. The only negotiation left was whether they would plead guilty. Cute story, but happy endings are rare. An 82-year-old San Francisco woman lost $18,000 to the pigeon drop scheme. It was nearly all her life savings. She was suckered with the expectations of getting one-third of $200. Her $18,000 was supposed to go toward taxes on her share of the cash. She went to two different banks. At the first, a teller was concerned and asked about the money. The victim said she needed it for a car. At the second bank, she returned to the scammers with her money, then sighed. The website SF Gate said she returned to find the scammers had vanished, along with her money. In Waldorf, Maryland, scammers took a different tact. One of them approached a woman in a grocery store parking lot, claiming to have just gotten eighty have just gotten eighty thousand dollars as part of her court settlement, and wanted to donate it to a church. He was from a foreign country and could not deposit it in a bank there. A second scammer supposedly overheard the conversation and wanted to help. They put the money into a handkerchief and the three prayed over it, prayed over it. The scammers put up their money to guarantee their trust in one another, but the sucker didn't have the cash to match it. After withdrawing money from two different banks, she had her $16,000 share and they drove toward a bank where she could deposit the found money. Along the way, needed new laptops and asked the woman to stop at a store. She purchased three Apple machines totaling $8,400. They returned to the bank. The woman took the handkerchief inside, only to find the bag contained shredded paper. The con artists were nowhere to be found. Were nowhere to be found. It's easy to believe we'd never fall for such a thing. But the con artists are convincing, and they present their case so logically that we're willing to suspend our disbelief. So let's return to our negotiations over who will hold the money begin. Spoiler alert, it will always be the mark. I mean, we just met, right? I mean, you've given me your name and address and phone number, and we've all exchanged, but I mean, how do I know that's real? You're not going to move her. I mean, this is a lot of money. Um, I know this sounds silly. I think we need to see a little something from you in good faith, from you in good faith. Is your bank nearby here? Maybe if you gave us, what do you think? Uh, I'm talking to my accomplice now, maybe 2,000 each or, or 3,000 each. Could you do that? So you would agree to give us each three grand, but cause you're holding how much? 30,000, 30, yeah, 38,000 here. So you're thinking, okay, this is all right. So we go to your bank, you go in and get, we give you this, uh -huh. you go home and what you find out is cut up newspaper right. in there. And back in Shermer's scenario, where he and illusionist Dan Harlan, along with the TV crew, have lured a sucker into their trap, using a wallet that reportedly held $3,000. Now comes the moment of truth. Will the, the moment of truth. Will the pigeon offer up his own cash? I don't know. What do you got? Do, do you have like a little bit or something? I don't have much, but you can help my daughter by something. Well, if, if you're going to hold the cash, I'll just take that because that's nothing. You know? That's nothing. That's nothing. So I'll just take that, okay. and you hold the, the cash. Okay. Actually, is there anything important in here? 
nothing really serious. It's just a All right, well, then I know you'll stay. I'll yeah. take this. I'll nope. take this, and you'll stay here, and I'll be back. And you hold the three grand, and I'll take this. All this goes in this pocket. I won't lose any of that stuff. That's right. Dan has just taken our pigeon's entire wallet. I'm coming back. I got the wallet. The, wallet. the pigeon right, is obviously nervous about having given up his wallet, but he reassures himself by patting his pocket containing what he thinks is $3,000. I continue to distract the pigeon by asking for directions. Once the coast is clear, I make my getaway under the guise of going to look for Dan. The pitted scam. But to those who know how to run the game and are ready for the unexpected, it's just a matter of talking the sucker into believing something that isn't true. Just ask this man from Vallejo, California, who lost $10,000 in a pigeon drop. It was not supposed to be happening to me. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to be an intelligent person, an educated person. A successful con seduces a sucker into a world where their dreams can come true. This magic casts a spell that leads its audience to anxiously hand over all their money to scammers, who vanish before the sucker realizes it was all an illusion. Podcast, please help us out by telling your friends and encouraging them to listen. Scams and Cons is available wherever podcasts are found and at scamsandcons.com. You can also follow us on Facebook. Just look for Scams and Cons. Scams and Cons. Lastly, we'd be grateful for a five-star rating wherever you're listening right now. It really does go a long way toward helping us build our audience. We'll be back in two weeks. Thanks for listening.